Hello, I'm Mark Sumner, host of the Channel Chat Podcast Show, and this is a special series during this COVID crisis where we'll be sharing the learnings, best practices, and failures and successes of all the channel leaders throughout the tech industry. So sit back, listen, and enjoy. Hello, I'm Mark Sumner, host of the Channel Chat Podcast Show, and today I have Mark McCormick, the Group Sales and Marketing Director of Academia, in the, in the Channel Chat Virtual Studio, Mark. How are we doing? Hello. How are we doing? You okay? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, 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 good. Um, Mark, I've done loads of these now. I've done like 50 of them now. So um, what I'm more interested in actually as we're coming into May is actually finding out, yes, people were talking about COVID and, you know, how we're working from home, remote work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But to be honest with you, you know, I'm having so many conversations around that. It's actually got quite dull keeping people talking about it. And what I'm more interested in seeing now, and I am in the of optimism, around what people are actually doing now. Well. So we have that stage where people are in panic mode, but God, I haven't got a laptop, I haven't got any remote working facilities, I need to get hold of my reseller or my partner and actually get some kit. But now they seem to have settled in it, and I'm, I'm interested in seeing what you see the next phase now. So, from, from, and also obviously from education as well, what are you seeing this way mm. in terms of what the market interactions you're having with your company? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good point, Mark, because, you know, we've all had to adopt and adapt a very different way of working, you know, obviously. Um, you know, we've mobilized really well. We, we, we turned things around really quickly, fortunately. You know, we are in IT and therefore we, we were practicing what we're preaching. We've, we've moved into the cloud. We were there already. You know, actually, the biggest challenge wasn't necessarily a technical thing. It was more from a, a behavioral patterns thing, you know, understanding the productivity. And, and me, and my, me and my sales management, you know, we were obsessed all of a sudden with data and understanding what people are doing and where they're doing it. And, all, and so we've gone past that now. And I think, you know, we're seeing green shoots of recovery in certain parts, particularly of education. And, and our business is fundamentally education. By a large, 70% of our turnover comes from education, be it a product or, and or a service. And um, I think they're seeing the same, by the way. So they've had to do exactly the same as what we've all had to. They've had to go and find somewhere to work. They've had to get the laptop, the two screens, the headsets. They've done all that. Yeah, And so I think the feedback from me and my teams, particularly this week, over the last 10 days, has been very much all about, okay, well, we still needed to do this renewable software. We still needed to have this iPad rollout, or we've still got this project pending. Now, whilst we don't know whether we're going to have students coming back into this college, this this school, or whatever, um, they've still got those challenges on their plates. And in fact, I was I was having a meeting yesterday with a, with a college, and they were saying, you know, they they're sort of looking forward almost to the next three months because no longer are they just an I you know an IT division offering a service. Yeah. Actually, they're part of the strategy now, so they're they're actually setting the plans. So you know, they've got procurement on the phone to them, and they've got everybody on the phone saying, right, okay, well, what does this look like for the next six nine 12 months because we may need to do for example our intake uh, for a college we might need to do that remotely so how do we make that work um, so th there's lots of those sorts of conversations going on um, and so what we're seeing is that that green small green shoot of recovery the other thing with education that we're, we're noticing is that um, a lot of that business is driven by framework agreements and obviously if they're non-key frameworks where we're actually seeing that the frameworks are being extended so it's actually given us some more time to kind of develop and work on those relationships and almost take that risk out of our business um, because you know at the moment we're looking at planning for next year and our FY kicks off in July um, and who knows you know it's thumb in the edge of I keep sort of saying to my CEO my, my FD you know normally Q1 for us is a, is a big bump period you know, the yeah. sales cycle normally materializes at this point um, what does this summer look like don't know so we've almost got two or three versions we've got our own covid version of the budget and then we've got a kind of a good better and best beyond that <laughs> it's because it's so many unknowns you know we've never ever seen this before obviously but like i said i think over the last last week or so we're starting to see customers warm to the fact that this is life as semi-usual and this is what it's going to be like so let's try and to sort of crack on and look at what we can do with you you know what i, I literally mark i literally echo that those words because Literally, literally, for the first time I've actually seen, seen having conversations come starts around hiring and onboarding, and we've made literally three deals today, three deals today, what was their start this week, whereas before the first two or three weeks, it was like, you know, bedlam. Um, now, I think people have sort of got, they can't keep on doing that every day. You know, that, that, no. that, you know we were having salespeople 
come to us and saying, oh, it's distasteful to call in COVID, it's distasteful to the customers, etc., etc., etc. You can't keep on saying that every week. You know, we, you can't keep on saying that for two or three months. So I've actually noticed literally this week, and the time last week, that customers were all, are happy to be prospected. They are happy to have investments. They are happy to have time around flatly. They are happy to have active conversations around the border, et cetera, et cetera. And I think some local people were saying to me the same thing. It was like, there was that wave of panic and you know, that, you know, heads up, headsets, and all that sort of good stuff. But now they've had to start planning. What, what's our business going to look like? What's our plans going to be look like? And I actually see that as lots of positive stuff going on in the market. And um, I actually hoping Obviously, I can't predict anything, but I'm hoping that the shoots of recovery are going to really continue through the summer, and, it, and it's going to be a good thing. So, going on to your plans around you know July, your FY, you obviously you had you had pre-COVID your plan. How 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 drastic of an adjustment has it been in terms of going to your CEO and saying, right? I know it's sort of finger in the air time, but is it is it definitely different around you know hiring, planning, growth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera? It, it, it is. We've had all of those conversations. So I would say it's, <laughs> it's all of the above. And, you know, we, we've been a very uh, fast growing company. I've been there 11 odd years and, and the growth year on year uh, has been in most scenarios, triple digit in some of the teams. So it's almost like we, we don't know anything other than growth. So we're, we're a little bit out of our comfort zone, if I'm being honest there. You know, it's like, well, what, what and how do we plan for that? Um, I think the, the key to this is that we've had to be uh, empathetic to the to the situation, we need to realise that you know this is out of our control. It's not anything to do with us. No matter how hard we work, no matter how hard we prospect our customers, it's not that. So I think first and foremost, we, we've got to be realistic. So I think you need to kind of cut a budget, which is what we're doing now. We're, we're cutting a budget, which which actually is real. We know it's going to happen based on either big renewals happening or or uh, there's projects already in the pipeline, and we know they're fairly confident that they're going to happen. And then it's just the sort of the the extra overachievement above above that that's the bit what we're saying well you know we need to be very realistic that if that happens happy days if it doesn't then you know not the end of the world so so we're definitely having to kind of do a top down bottom up approach which maybe not always would we do that it's very much on the on the foot on, on the accelerator and, and going forwards with things and just sell through it kind of thing so now we're, we're being a little bit more um, lenient as to uh, as to what we're looking at um so it's, it's going to be a difficult one i i would say the q q1 for us the summer one for us it, it's a bit of a game changer but it really will make or break the year if, if it does happen and you know word is from the majority of some of our education institutions is that the the spend may still happen this academic year yeah. and in fact even the next academic year might still be okay because it's kind of a year lag it's actually beyond that and then it's how they for example if you're a university i know there's lots and lots of concerns there around foreign students so you know they're their revenue generating you know how does that happen how does that work so then again it, it it bleeds back into having your IT strategy because you could still have foreign students, but it's all about the distant learning and how you're actually going to mobilize them. And you can still have one-to-one -one rollouts, for example, albeit distant learning. So so we are seeing some of those discussions already happening. Um, but yeah, we've just got to be, uh, we've just got to cut and slice the budget two or three different ways. And that's that's going to be the challenge for us this year, I think. Absolutely. Because again, I've noticed from a lot of um, partners who are doing project work, None of them have told me that it's been frozen. They've all, they've just told me this mm. over the last four or five weeks that it was you know it was potentially delayed and et cetera, et cetera. Do you see those delays stopping now? I you know, four weeks ago everything was delayed, but this week I'm I'm seeing the projects actually say, actually coming back saying, actually, Mark, I actually do want to have a conversation with you. Can, can we have a detailed conversation around more of a planning stage? And actually, we, even though we had that project before, we might have to do it slightly differently, but we are gonna press ahead. Are you seeing those conversations happening? Yeah, definitely. So I, I was on one of those uh, even just yesterday talking about a project and it might just be a slightly different flavor of what we were looking yeah. at. But by and large, we've got the budget in, we've done the procurement, we've done all the tendering and all that kind of stuff is done. Uh, and in some scenarios, the infrastructure was already being built around it, be it they were bringing in new Wi-Fi points, et cetera. So they're, they're, they're the interesting ones because, for example, one of the big ones we're looking at at the moment is that we would have been very hands-on in some of the training and the mobilization of the projects. And now, um, guess what? That's all being moved virtualized. So we're going to actually put that up into the cloud and, and it's almost going kind to... Of, teaching teachers how to, to use the kit, but they can do it at their own self-paced because we're going to host it somewhere for them. So 
I think some of those projects are going to have to still go ahead because, as I said, they, they come September, October, we don't know whether students are physically going to be allowed back in. If they don't, then they're still going to need the collateral and some of that equipment to, to actually go ahead and press ahead with, with their plans. So I just think there'll be some tweaks in amongst that. And then think that one of the colleges I spoke to yesterday, they were talking about a big rollout, a big project, which we're still going ahead with. Um, and they're looking at a bit of a hybrid option. So in other words, they'll have a rotating um, uh, rotor for, for staff and for students. And actually, they may split physically the classrooms. They may still use Teams and laptops, but still give the students the ability to come into the place. Um, because actually, that's what you know most of going to college or university is about, is actually being able to go in and, and culturally still have that effect on the place and actually be able to use the facilities. So they're, they're still going to press ahead from, from what we can see, yeah. Um, I'm probably saying I, I would say yeah. Over the last month, we had everything go on hold. Maybe to where we are today, it's sort of not, notched down to about 75% of some of that. And then again, we've, we're seeing some some shoots of recovery with with some confirmed confirmations next week of phone calls of uh, okay, well we do need to do this, but actually rather be it September, we may need to push it back to Christmas. So not the end of the world. They're still they're still there entirely. So um, so hopefully yeah, some 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 growth numbers still to come. Um, Interesting as well. We we would you know would always put new heads in our budget, new salespeople. Um, so we want to press ahead still with that. You know that that for me is an interesting one because actually, um, I believe some of that talent might be out there now, given what's going on in in across the channel. Um, I also think that we we're very comfortable now working remotely i think we've always been able to do it but not been able you know we, we haven't been forced to do it and uh given that we can do this now i bet you that we will start to see uh sales managers sales directors like myself not having an issue if you presented us with some really good guys who are based in either edinburgh or cornwall Do doesn't matter it doesn't matter that we're based in north london and serve mostly essex and hertfordshire we're a uk-based company why wouldn't we want to hire good guys who are based all over the uk so so actually i think that element of recruitment will still be there and i think we'll still be looking uh, to grow the team in that respect uh, and then of course acquisition you know we, we are quite an acquisitive company we've done some small ones over the last few years and we had one in the pipeline just before this all kicked in wow, wow. so we said to ourselves we're um I don't know what we're going to do. We're, we're either mad or we're, we're stupid or do we carry, carry on? What, what, what happens next? You know, so absolutely uncharted territory. So, um, uh, yeah, there's, there's still one in the pipeline, still working on the due diligence. And um, there, there may even be another beyond that. And um, the more you look at it and the more you try and put yourself off these sorts of things, um, actually, it still makes sense. If it still makes sense for the business and you still believe in your plan and your addressable market is going through some turmoil, but largely, you know, it's just moving. It's not going away forever. Then we're going to do it anyway. So, uh, so that'll be interesting. So maybe next time we speak, I might be able to tell you about, about yeah. uh, some acquisition. <laughs> well, interesting. Um, it's, it's, it's funny, Mark, obviously we all know about the, you know, the negative impact that COVID's had, you know, NHS, the deaths, et cetera. And obviously it's tragedy and, and there'll be some companies that won't survive, but hmm. let's talk about the positives for a minute. Have you seen this as a potential get our house in order? And what I mean by that is streamline processes. Do we need that? Do we need that process? Do we need to virtually see this person? Does this person need to be on here at nine o'clock? Do I need to have those, that meeting in Scotland where I could do a video like this? Have you looked at it and had time to sort of assess actually, actually, this is quite a good time to get our house in order and actually streamline processes that when you're so in the mill of running a business, you know, you haven't got time to do that. Sometimes you're just you're, you're just you're just full steam ahead. But this, at this time, it's almost like actually you have a bit of time at home to actually think, do I need these? So have you had the sort of time to sort of you and your leadership team had time to sort of reassess and sort of get your house in order and any drastic changes happen there? Yeah, no, definitely. Good. It's a good question because you know we we are. You're right. We are in the business day to day, and um, you know I won't be no different to, to most business owners, sales directors who um, where where change like this happens. You you really do need to take a cold hard look at actually are there efficiencies? Are there ways of doing things? Because you're working remotely, you can't just shout over to so and so at the bottom end of the office or run over to him or her over there and say actually can you show me this or do this. So actually yeah we we've we've gone for a whole heap of change over the last two weeks. Talking to my sales operations manager, she's been fantastic in pulling together new ways of doing things. Just because I'm now experiencing it, and actually from the the first two weeks we all found ourselves a lot more hands-on all of a sudden 
and the amount of times we were messaging somebody saying, oh, I didn't realize we had to do this to click that to get there to do, you know, right. and I wouldn't normally see that on a daily basis. And, and actually, we, we've learned a, a, a big lesson off the back of that. So definitely in terms of, of efficiency changing, um, you know, we all talk about being agile. Agile IT is, is the, the phrase that we're all using and be, being nimble. And, and we were fortunate because we could move quite quickly and, and mobilize and all work from home. Um, I definitely think that's that's a thing of the future now, you know, and, and I'm I'm a bit old school in as much as I love to build, you know, have a big sales floor and it's buzzing and we've got the bell ringing when the orders are coming in and all that kind of stuff. And that's the bit we'll miss. So that's the bit we've got to be careful of not to lose the the cultural thing um, and be it going over the pub on a Friday, you know, having that all good stuff with the sales incentive. So it might be that there's going forwards a bit of a hybrid between between okay we, we can mobilize we've got the systems all of our stuff lives in, the, lives in the cloud and that's great but let's not forget the good culture stuff that we were building prior to that um so i think there'll be definitely a hybrid of it there's there's certainly some some changes coming off the back of this and efficiencies that we can see more more from a systems perspective i would say um maybe utilizing certain people doing doing other things as well so you know we, we've learned some lessons on on that but yeah there's definitely going to be some good change i would see coming off the back of it yeah and, 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 and again i'll echo i've done that in my own business I think you know suddenly you look at things that were the way you were doing it and when you're forced to actually look at something you know when you're so, you're so busy running a business it, you know you're trying to go 100 mile an hour it's very very difficult but when you're forced to actually look at something some of the stuff mm. I had in my own business thinking why did I ever do that anyway you know yeah, yeah. so actually yeah. in some ways it's, it's been quite positive well, one thing that I, I've noticed now I'm, I'm interested in getting your thoughts on this when I used to go to meetings myself, I, I would probably go half the time. I'd get, I would have an agenda, but I'd probably go blind. I'd actually say, oh, you know, uh, Mark, I'd come up to your office, etc. And I'd travel up there and I'd go up there before. And I might not know if, yes, I'd understand the culture, but I not, might not know if we're going to get any work, etc. immediately. Do you think now, which I'm doing myself, is all, well, I'm forced to do it because I can't get there. But what I'm more interested in is what now I'm, I can actually pre-qualify the customer over this platform, I almost got to sort of say, Mark, look, are you serious about hiring or not? Before I come down there and mm. the culture, I want to know if we can actually work together. Do you see that, that that could be a real benefit for your sales guys and your interaction with your sales team? Because, you know, let's be honest, I miss the buzz of the office and I miss those interactions, but there was so much time wasted hounding people on the phone and trying to go to meetings that never come off, etc. when really... A half an hour chat on the video that you can do. A, you can do. You know, if you're if you're really going for it, you can go four or five in the afternoon back to back, and you can get through them. Yeah. You know, stop all that messing around and wasted time and energy when you can actually say, actually, Mark, are we going to work together or not? Or at this school, are, you, are we going to work with this school? Are you at this university or not? And it can save that. So, are you seeing your interactions potentially going to change moving forward? Are you pre all the meetings? Absolutely, and and I think we we we're going for a bit of a curve on that. So. I think we, we've done that internally ourselves. And, you know, I talk about how we mobilized in a day and everybody was working from home great. We, we then kind of started to learn our own lessons because we've all been using 365 and Teams, but not to the extent of what we're doing now. And we kind of sent out a bit of a teaser document in the first week just to say, you know, some general stuff about if you're having a meeting with a client, you know, think about still put the shirt on. You might be wearing shorts and flip flops. That's fine. But actually, it's just things like that. And all of a sudden, we, we were making up our own rules almost. But I think what's quite nice is that we've learned a lot between now, you know, between them and now. Um, and so it's it's for me, the, these sorts of meetings and, and I've had a few now with customers. Um, it's actually bringing us a bit closer to them because all of a sudden you've got this common theme to talk about, you know, or how, you know, I was on, I was on a, on a call yesterday for, for half an hour, an hour with, um, a senior, senior guy at a college's group. And, you know, normally a bit of a tough cookie when we go to see him and, and great relationship, but very formal. There's always the, the hard and fast agenda. And actually it was, it was great. It was the most informal we've ever been, um, you know, chatting about the kids or the garden or the picture he had up behind it yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. So, so so you're sort of virtually being brought into people's lives all of a sudden. Yeah, so do you know what I mean? So you've got this kind of commonality and, and, and it, it was a lot softer. But I tell you what was brilliant as well is the collaboration tool within within teams that we were using. So you could all of a sudden you, you had your agenda and, and often you're right, you know, you drive for an hour or two and there's expenses involved there and all that kind of stuff. You sort of cut to the chase a little bit when, when you're on here. So you can say, well, you know, I know this, this and this, this is part of the agenda. And, and I was sort of sending over things, PDFs, links to various websites, and he could look at it there and then, oh, okay, I like that. Can we do this? 
And actually, we walked away from that meeting, that virtual meeting, um, with probably 80% of our normal follow-up and actions already done because we were doing them in the chat. And um, I, I think that's definitely a future that, that things to come. 100%. I, I totally, yeah. totally agree with that, Mark, because I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, you know, you know, waiting, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying stop the face-to-face -face meetings. I love the face-to-face -face meetings. I, I think they're fantastic. And obviously, at a certain level, no one's going to have a multi-million pound deal without seeing them. But the pre-qualifying of it or before, yeah. you know, I think there should be no more going into meetings. And I've done it loads of times, going into meeting blind, thinking, let's hope we can do something, et cetera, et cetera. But now I, I, I'm, I'm almost thinking, you know, if, if someone, when we go back and, and Sam wants me to travel over to um, wherever it is and have a meeting to discuss roles, I'd be like, well, look, can we just get, jump on a video? Let's see if there's any synergy first, because you know, if we're not the same song sheet, we could be completely wasting each other's time. I'm yep. much more confident doing that now because when you're having these interactions, it doesn't have to be formal. You know, it, you know, mm -hmm. I can still see your body language. I can still see if you're engaged. You know, over the phone, you, you, you can still be quite rude to a client. And I, I'm seeing every customer I'm dealing with, they're pleasant. <laughs> they're actually nice. They're actually yeah. being transparent if they want to work with yeah. or not. And, and if that is anything to be positive about, if that continues... I think the channel is absolutely going to, going to fly out of this and their interactions with they have their customers. The job will be more enjoyable, Mark, basically. Yeah, no, I agree. Of sales, which is a bloody hard job if you're in IT sales, it's a tough gig. It will be much more enjoyable because the, the, the interactions you'll have your, with your customers, you know, we, we can all say we've got a great relationship with our customer. You know, I'm speaking to people now, I've got a great, great relationship with the customer. Some of them I've never even met. And I'm thinking, I've got a great relationship with a customer. But now I'm in their homes. I'm seeing, I've joined them to virtual beers on a Friday or whatever it is. And I think that's yeah. real, real positive. And if that can continue post-COVID, you know, that then to me, that's been a, 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 a success of it. So that's... Yeah, well, we, we will encourage it. I'll absolutely encourage that across the sales teams. And, and definitely off the back of this, there's there's more training to come. There's, there's I think, you're, you're right. You can go to these, what we would call the kind of coffee meeting yeah. and, and sort of there's a loose agenda and, you know, I'll pop in and see them type approach where now I think the pre-qualification side of it, you can cut to the chase. You know, they, they want to move on quickly. That There's no value trying to waste their time for the coffee meeting. Well, actually, pick it up on Teams for 20 minutes. You can, you can almost do your presentation there. And then if there's something to come off the back of it and you don't mind driving up down the country to, to those meetings so um so my finance director will be pleased because the bar bills will be less <laughs> and the mileage will be <laughs> less but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. but um but to be honest with you mark they, they let's be honest they did sort of get out of hand you know i was looking at my traveling entertainment pill and i'm thinking jesus did we really spend that much on you know going yeah. traveling to london or doing this or going out on you know lunch was just, you know was you know i'm actually being a bit more frugal you know i, I yeah. I mean, it was like extravagant. Maybe it wasn't. It means to be, but you know, I'm thinking now. I'm thinking actually, do I want to go and spend twenty six quid on a, a, on a on a train fare, a hundred pound for a lunch, and then maybe a bit? Absolutely. Just suddenly thinking it's two hundred and fifty quid or something. It's like that's that's not the best way of time, and and you can do them back to back. So it's interesting. One one point I wanted to come back to on you, you said about hiring, and you, you you potentially look at you know location might not be an issue now. Have you actually now thought, and you, you mentioned it earlier about you know, they could be in Skegness, they could be in London, they could be, you know, Edinburgh. You know, people have had to sort of do virtual onboarding, they've had to do virtual inductions. You know, I spoke to a couple of directors who are doing now virtual start lunches where they'll get multiple, you know, multiple guys on having a lunch meeting because normally he'd take the new starter out for lunch, that's what he did, but now he's getting the ten of them online and actually just doing it. He said it's saved loads of time. So has your, your approach to sort of, you know, training and doing virtual inductions on boarding, it's had to change. But do you think that potentially now will change moving forward? It is, yeah. I mean, I, I was only on a call this morning with my HR director, who's um, who's now already working on a kind of version 2.0 of what was our new onboarding document. And, and that, guess what, is remote. Um, one thing we did just before COVID was we actually launched our own internal uh, self-paced learning you know we're, we're really big and believe in a lot of personal development and we're always trying to to give as much as we can to the whole company not just sales and sales might sort of sometimes get the easy gig there because it can be vendor led and the vendors can do the, the, the training and we can you know get, get the guys in get the pizzas get the beers and donuts and we can do the training but we wanted a bit more than that and kind of academiaize it and put our own spin on it yeah. so so we launched our own moodle so we've got our own platform where actually you can go in there and you can sort of learn everything from how to use the phone system to the to the crm system so what we're going to do is we're going to use that platform really as as the the, the way to go first and foremost whether we you know we get back to a complete state of normality 
we're actually going to push it through that anyway. And I think that's going to get people on board a, at their self-paced and in their own time. They can actually, before they even join us, they can almost get in there and get a flavor for what we do and how we say things and what we do. So, yeah, so we're actually going to change that. Um, I think the remote induction is a great idea. I love the idea about the remote, the, the lunch as well. That's, that's, yeah. that's brilliant. I, I but, that um, yeah. having, instead of traveling around to every location, so no, I'll take the, 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 the new store out for lunch, literally have 10 of them on here and say, look, yeah, and, so, and, and also the expense of it, et cetera, suddenly saying, look, you have lunch, we'll just talk, and an, an open platform to look. The CEO had 10, 10 starters doing it. I thought, I know it's an obvious idea now, but I thought, what a great idea. You know, that is, you've, got someone yeah. in, you've got someone in the, you know, the, the accounts payable from the sales guide to whatever it is, and suddenly it's an interactive, and I, I thought that was really, really good, really, really good. Yeah, I think it will. I think what it will do is it will force companies like ours, uh, like most, really, to to un really understand what are they doing from a personal development perspective yeah. for for their teams. Because, you know, we're all be forgiven of, of being busy. You know, life is busy, but day to day work is busy. But actually, what are you truly doing from a personal development perspective? And if if now we can spend some time and money and effort and actually getting a be it a Moodle platform or an internal training platform and really, really get it humming and, and looking looking good, looking relevant and, and actually easy to use, people will engage in it, particularly sales guys. And that's that's going to be difficult for us running remote sales teams now. You know, that's we've, some of us have done it internally, some of us haven't. And that's going to be a challenge. So keeping them engaged as much as not just hitting targets and talking to customers, but actually what you're doing from your personal development perspective to have that on an online platform, it, it just it clicks in quite nicely off the back. Yeah, of I, I do as well, because you know, there's no doubt about it. People were petrified what people were doing at home, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah, they're doing nothing. I, I was one of those owners. I was thinking, if they're not in the office, they're not doing nothing. Mm. What I realized was, if they're not going to do nothing at home, they're certainly not going to do nothing in the office, just because it, it, they yeah. can go to the water cooler, they can go out to lunch, they can pretend they're ordering something in the office anyway. So they're either doing it at home or, or they're not doing it at home. Regardless, it's the same outcome. So what I have to mm. you know, the, you know, you, you I'm, I'm looking at my own guys and I'm looking at the, the people I'm getting feedback from is, 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 is the activities you want, that's the, something to monitor. The activities, the engagements, you know, the customer interactions, you know, if you look in someone's diary and you're thinking, well, they're actually not doing anything, they're not engaging anyone, they've got no meetings, that's a problem. But if they're doing the activities, whether they're doing it at seven o'clock in the morning and then, you know, doing yoga at nine or whatever it is, but as long as the eight hour shift is being put in and the actual outcomes put, do you know what? I think that's going to be potentially the new world. I think people will do it. You know, you know. Oh, actually, I've got half hour. I need to go and to the shops or whatever at three thirty or whatever it is before. People mm. Feel terrible for doing that, but now you know if they work until six thirty, I'm actually. Do you know? To you, Mark, I'm actually doing more work now than I ever have. I have. I don't know if it's because yeah. I'm I'm thinking forced because of the market, but I'm actually thinking. I'm, I'm doing more calls. I'm doing more interactions. I'm I'm actually I'm actually enjoying the job more. The only thing I am missing is. Is the the office environment, the team, the, the you know the spinning of the wheel we have, all the celebrations of the wheel go. That I am missing that in the team interactions. But in terms of actual efficiencies and work, I definitely think I'm more effective, and um, I think that'll be a, a, a thing to the come in the future. My, my last my last question for you, and it's it's a bit of a personal one, really. I know you're not the world health expert, um, but I do want to sort of get your own view of what the next sort of three to six months is going to happen for academia. And, and the market in general, what you see um, in your prediction. I won't hold it to you. I won't, I won't call you back in three months and say, Mark, you're wrong. But I'm interested in <laughs> If I'm right, you can buy me a virtual <laughs> beer. <laughs> <laughs> um no it's you know what it, it it changes obviously day by day and and you know we were having a conversation earlier on about okay we've got to wait for the government to do their next announcement to do this to do that and actually we, we kind of sort of said to ourselves well let's go beyond that now let's start to create our own plan for what if this happens and what if that happens and how we might mobilize the next time around but i think your point there is, is quite key about the um the remote working side of things we, we will we will formally announce that across the company to say to everybody well this is this is the shape of things to come guys we don't mind this now we're not going to moan about how many emails and phone calls you probably made actually it's about managing outcomes so we as managers directors and board will need to change our approach and our attitude to, to all of that but actually i think there'll be there'll be culture changes people start to look at their the way the hours they're putting in you know rather than spending three hours in the car driving to from the offices now you know people will start to enjoy their jobs probably a bit more and i think we're 
start to reciprocally get that back from some of the sales guys versus some of the things that we're now saying is is achievable and is is expected. Um, so I think both sides of the, the coin there are going to change. Um, we're we're going to plow on as as sort of business as usual, but adjusted business as usual, be it on the numbers and some of the approach. I think the marketing side of things, again, you've got to be sympathetic to what's going on at the moment and how you generate net new business. Um, I can't imagine we're going to start picking the phone up and speaking to you know random companies and, and whatever else and trying to flog them some kit. It's not going to happen. You, you've got to kind of be sympathetic to that. And I think you've got to be relevant. You've got to be inspiring. You've got to be interesting, really, You know, rather than pinging people loads of stuff. And so, so we're going to need to take that on board. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, we're going to have to probably change some of our net new business approach. You know, that, that will definitely need to change. But certainly, I think from a behavioral perspective and, and how we are as a company, I, I can see us being a lot more agile, a lot more modern in terms of our approach. And, you know, I've, I've heard it on some of your podcasts before, but read it elsewhere as well, where people are thinking about, well, we wanted to grow the company, wanted to bring more people in. And therefore, we need a big office. You know, we need to knock downstairs, knock upstairs, get a big office in London that that's that's going to go away we're not necessarily going to do that you know so we are still wanting to grow we're still ambitious we've still got intentions of getting the group um to, to the numbers that we want to get it to so yeah i don't think we'll change that i think we'll continue and remain ambitious um we want to bring people through that journey with us um and i'm actually sort of looking forward to it in some some degree yeah. you know i think it's a big change it's a it's a different way of working it's different challenges it almost kind of freshens you up a little bit for the for the new financial yeah, absolutely mark you know mark you've been a you've been a fantastic guest you know Thanks for joining us and listening to another episode of our Channel Chat podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard and are listening on iTunes, please could you give us a review and subscribe in order to get the newest episodes as soon as they're released. Otherwise, as always, we release an episode every Thursday at midday, so hopefully you can join us then.